three, two, one. podcast guests and welcome back for another episode. I am your guest host, Jennifer Zick. I'm the founder and CEO of Authentic Brand. We are a community of fractional CMOs that works with growing businesses, helping them to overcome random acts of marketing and confidently take the next right step in their growth. We absolutely love the work that System and Soul does to help entrepreneurial businesses build strong operating systems, structure, process, and teams while honoring the soul of their organization and what makes them truly unique, their culture, their values, and their people. We're firm believers in in both of those components at Authentic Brand and in the work that we do as marketing leaders for our clients to help them really connect to the soul and the heart of what their brand stands for in order to attract the healthiest, happiest growth and relationships. And I'm really pleased to be leading this mini series of six episodes on the concept of authentic growth, being joined by so many of my very close friends in marketing and business leadership. So without any further ado, I'm so grateful to be here to introduce you to my good friend, Scott Severson of BrandPoint. We're going to talk today about authentic growth through content and digital demand generation. And Scott, I would love it if you take the virtual mic and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are and what BrandPoint does. Sure. Well, thank you, Jen, and thank you, System and Soul, for having me on. I'm excited to talk to everyone today. Uh, I am the CEO of BrandPoint. We are a 25-year-old marketing services agency. I have been with the company for the last 15 years, which sounds like a really long time now, uh, but I've only been in my current role for a year. Uh, A little bit about BrandPoint. We operate two distinct divisions. Brand Point Content Promotion, which focuses on syndicating and promoting content uh, from our clients on news media sites across the country. So kind of a content promotion strategy. And then we have Brand Point Digital Marketing that focuses more on your content, your owned media, and digital marketing strategy and services. Together combined, these two different practice groups really allow us to offer a very broad range of digital marketing services to help our clients reach their marketing goals and next level growth. Thank you so much for that overview. And I should mention to our listeners that our friendship goes way, way back in the way back machine. uh, Scott and I have sat around tables for (laughs) a lot of years talking about digital growth strategy. So it's just really fun. Every time I get in a room with you, Scott, I feel smarter. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's just jump right into the deep end and talk about in the work that you do with growth minded, growth focused companies, what do you think is the most common misunderstanding about digital demand generation? Um, I think there's two that I I hear frequently. Uh, One is that it's really easy. And the other is that it can be automated through some magical software. I think the the marketing software salespeople must be amazing because people think the software can do anything. And the reality is it's a tool, but it doesn't do everything for you. Uh, Our perspective is that to generate consistent and predictable demand, you really need a process that works for your business, and then you need to consistently execute on that process. Uh, For for BrandPoint, our proven approach really begins by creating clarity for our clients. And we like to begin by really clarifying your value proposition so we can articulate it in a way that your audience understands and that they can relate to. Uh, We find kind of amazingly, that this is a missing piece for so many marketers. And we think that this strong kind of core value message um, is is really the key to consistency. And it leads to consistent messaging, consistent strategy, consistent execution, and then ultimately consistent results is what we're all hoping for. Absolutely. Oh gosh, you hit on so many really important concepts and just unpacking that one small question, but you went right into the deep end. You and I have talked at length about there's nothing automagical 
about great digital demand generation. There's not like there's, and I just came off a conversation today with this wonderful, bright founder of an entrepreneurial business in the very early stages. And she's completely overwhelmed about what she needs to do next for marketing. And she's wondering if it's worth all that time and money to actually work on that message foundation, or should she just start turning on the digital motion, right? And I really reassured her, like you just said, that without that foundation firmly in place, you know, one of my favorite quotes from a past colleague is, if you just turn on the marketing technology with a bad, un, you know, not stable message foundation, you're just making your message suck faster to more people. Exactly. <laughs> so there's a lot of thoughtful work and architecture that underpins demand generation, and there's nothing out of magical about it. And in my setting up my next question, I like to say that marketing is simple. Mm -hmm. It's just not easy. And I think right. business leaders and owners are so overwhelmed by all the noise around the tools, the tactics, the technologies, all the things, and there's a lot of shiny objects. So mm -hmm. I find in the work that we do as CMOs, talking with CEO, founder, owner, leaders of businesses, that they often approach our conversation from the bottom up. They start mm -hmm. by asking questions like, should we have a Pinterest account? Do we need to do TikTok? Rather than starting from the top down, guided by vision, strategy, differentiators, values, everything you just talked about. So how do you help your customers shift from shiny object syndrome to a strategic focus for their content strategy? Well, it's not always easy. Uh, it is really easy to be distracted by shiny objects. And if you have an entrepreneurial CEO that wants to try a lot of things, um, it can come up a lot. And we have to have that conversation um, fairly frequently. I, I can't tell you how many conversations I've had about TikTok or influencer marketing strategy where it either made zero sense for the brand or maybe it makes sense for them, but the foundational aspects of their marketing are just not solid enough yet, that foundational layer, where it would make sense to layer on these additional sexy channels. Uh, what I talk to clients about is I'd, I'd much rather see you really develop strength in one or two channels first, instead of being mediocre or worse in, in many channels. Uh, one of the things that we do in the assess stage of our approach, we really wanna just get the lay of the land of where are you today? Where do you currently stand? What's worked for you? What hasn't worked for you? Where are you trying to go with all this? And then we use that information combined with other research to really inform our go forward recommendations in our planning stage. Yeah, I want to just say amen to the statement you made about be great in a couple channels rather than mediocre or less than that by damage, potentially damaging your brand across yeah. too many. And the thing about a growth entrepreneurial business, actually, frankly, any size business is no company has unlimited resources. Right. There's a reality to the resources you have available to work with, whether it's money, human capital and energy time. And when you are basically experimenting with a lot of channels without a strong foundation and success in a few before layering on your resources get drained out really fast. That's that whole yeah. spray and pray and you've diluted your brand and suddenly you can't move forward very further, very much further faster. So I just want to second that motion. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I want to talk about another concept that I think a lot of entrepreneurial businesses don't recognize when they step into the space of digital and content marketing. They've been often, our clients often, and probably yours too, are founder-led businesses that have been sales-driven. They've succeeded in building a product or service that's validated in the market, and they've had good success, and now they need to scale and reach audiences that don't know them yet and that they don't know yet, right? Open new doors for next-level growth. And often those conversations, um, you know, are, are begun at this point of let's just get more at bats. Let's get more of our content out there. We want to pitch to more people, but let's talk about content for a minute as a tool to help rather than as mm -hmm. a tool to sell. So like first generation content in a business might be more sales oriented, but when you're talking about demand gen, it's the content that engages everybody up until that readiness to buy. Right. So right. How can business leaders expand their notion of content as it relates to demand generation and helping? I think it's a, an evolution that we all have to go through. I, I had to go through it. I was very sales driven and conversion driven and I wanted content that converts. And 
it took me a while to kind of wrap my head around this notion of help first and and convert later. So we're, we're a little biased given the nature of our business, but we believe that content is the primary way that a brand is going to attract, engage, convert, and even retain customers. So it does have its place throughout that, that customer life cycle. The thing, one of the things I get geeked up about a lot of stuff, but one of the things that I get geeked up about is really thinking about that customer journey and, and how your customer discovers you in the first place. What does that discovery moment look like for your industry or business? Um, you know, where are the opportunities there? And I think really that top of the funnel, getting people into your funnel that are high value prospects is really where the magic happens because everything after that is just consistency and optimization. But if we can get the right people in the funnel in the first place, uh, that's a huge lever. So our perspective is one of the most effective ways that we can use content to get people into our funnel is, you nailed it, is with helpful content. We're not just checking the box and creating content for the sake of creating content, but really striving to create something that is helpful uh, for your audience. I think um, Jay Bear said, you know, you want to create content that people would actually pay you for. It's so valuable. Um, you know, so are we creating a real value? And then by being helpful in the first place, by providing value, you're creating trust. And that trust is the price of admission to establish your expertise and ultimately build a client relationship. Um, so then with that kind of mindset, if we're creating a strategy where we're focusing on you know, creating helpful content, showing up in the right channels on a consistent basis, we're just going to be much more effective at helping our client get people into the funnel. Listener, I know you're enjoying this episode with our friend Jennifer, so I'll be brief, but I've got to fess up. We screwed up big time. Me and my business partner, Chris White, we've done all the wrong stuff when it comes to running a business. We've hired too quickly, fired too late, wasted resources, picked the wrong objective. The list is long. It goes on and on. I won't bore you. Here's the thing we've learned, though. I think it'll save you some of the mistakes that we've made. The only way to fight the chaos and complexity that is constantly coming at you is to get clarity and control over your business. Over 20 years, Chris and I have seen it all. The more businesses get stuck in the chaos and complexity, the harder it is to grow, stay healthy, and sustainable as a business. That's why he and I created System & Soul. It is the only business framework that helps you run better systems and do it with the soul of your business in mind. We want to help business leaders like you find breakthrough. If you're ready, learn more at systemandsoul.com. And hey, we're training new System & Soul coaches right now. If you're an experienced business leader and you believe you can help leadership teams overcome their mess, we would love to talk with you. We've got a few limited seats in our training cohort, so do not wait. Learn more at systemandsold.com forward slash coach. I love that you use the word, word trust. Um, it's part of my common vernacular as I talk about the strategies for building authentic, healthy growth. It begins with trust and positive sentiment. And at Authentic Brand, we, we nerd out on this and we talk about sprinkling seeds of love and little dance. We think of ourselves as cast, casting little dandelion seeds out into the world that grow advocacy and love for what we do, even if it's not with those who will buy our services, but maybe those who will someday become one of our CMOs or someday be influential in a business that could hire us or be connected to a partner ecosystem, every single positive seed that you sow in the world and helping people brings trust toward your brand, which opens oh. doors. Well, I love and that. you guys do a wonderful job uh, of that with all of the various content that you create that is just about educating and creating value for your audience. So well, well done. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you for being part of that today by sharing your wisdom. So I, I do a really good job of 
bringing my smart people around me. That makes everybody smarter. Um, so nothing can happen in digital marketing without content. And I tell clients all the time, and I, I have lived this out with my team, like the number one first investment in my marketing budget is always content. And that's the budget that's always expanding because as I layer on, as I find channels that work, and then we add another channel, that needs more content and it's leveraging from the existing content, but then dispersing it in different ways. And so content grows as your strategy and your channel grows. So content takes a lot of strategy. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of thought that goes into creating great multi-purpose leverageable content. And yet I think because of those shiny objects, we already talked about a lot of growing early stage businesses and even frankly established businesses Think about content production based on the tool. I hear a lot of mm -hmm. brands talking about we're going to hire a, 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 you know, an intern to manage our social media channels because all the young people understand that technology and the tool. They know how to work the tool. But really, ultimately, we know it's not about working the tool. It's working the brand and the customer experience mm -hmm. through the tool, right? So instead of a bottom-up tool-driven process, it's, it's top-down. It's strategy. So Mm -hmm. That takes investment, real investment, right? So how do you help your customers understand the investment required in strategy and smart content that builds trust in your brand? Well, I hope if the last two years have convinced us of anything, it's, it's about the sheer necessity of, of being awesome at digital. And I, I, <laughs> Early on, I used to care a lot about trying to educate and convince business leaders about why hiring interns or, or somebody on Fiverr to create your content is, is not the right approach. Um, where, where I've learned is today, if I encounter a business leader who thinks hiring an intern is the right strategy, we run away from them as fast as we can because we've found that it is a great signal that they are only interested in checking the marketing box versus being truly committed to um, really creating an exceptional marketing practice. Now, I don't wanna, I'm not bashing interns. No, we, we love interns. <laughs> we have an intern program um, hiring, you know, and we've had several that have, you know, moved on to become great employees with yes. us but use them in the right capacity. It's not for your content. And if you're in a business with any level of sophistication, it's only gotten harder to win the battle for attention. And that, that battle requires, like we just talked about, deep expertise and creating true value for your audience. What we've found is if you're using interns or freelancers or people without deep expertise, in building great content and leveraging subject matter experts, you're just going to end up with beginner level content that really doesn't provide any value to your audience. You're exactly right. And I wanna reaffirm that interns are high value. We all start somewhere in our career. Everybody totally. needs a chance to be developed and to learn and to touch the material and to work with it. And there are a lot of exceptional writers who yeah. early in their career, however, the point you're making and that I'm making here is that when you work in a complex business where the customer experience is high touch, the material is sophisticated and deep, um, you need some wisdom around that. And I've written and talked extensively about the concept of you can't outsource your brand. Now you can leverage right. agency partners in really strong ways to augment mm -hmm. your team's capabilities. I use an outsourced contract writer, but I don't outsource my brand. The thought leadership still mm -hmm. comes from me and my CMOs and we invest the time to give the direction and to be the voice and, and provide right. the editorial guidance. So the content's accurate and quality. Mm -hmm. So, yep. you know, exactly. three cheers for internships, but we all need to treat content really does guide the customer journey. And we yeah. use that content, like you said, at every single stage in that customer experience. So it's worthy of our investment for sure. Absolutely. All right. So at BrandPoint, let's talk a little bit about your unique approach to customer mm -hmm. relationships and success. You've developed something called the Content Marketing Operating System. And we're here today talking to an audience who loves operating systems. So let's dive into that. Tell us about your system and how it helps brands grow. Sure. So we created the Content Marketing Operating System mainly as a tool to help create 
clarity for our clients on what are the components that you need to have to have in place to have a healthy practice? And then what does it look like to have strength in each of those components? So it really just gave us a common, like any operating system, it gave us a common vocabulary. It, it gave us things to look at and, and some tool sets. Uh, the way we use this system is, is really twofold. Uh, one is we make the content available uh, for free uh, in the in the idea that it's just out there to help people really self-assess their current state. Where do I currently stand? What are the components that I need to be paying attention to? And then what does it look like to have strength? Um, so you can look at this, it's on our website and, and, and see how that relates to your business. Like most operating systems, I find you get the most impact from them when you're having an expert or an implementer help guide you through the process and really kind of take you through it. And that's one of the things that we do during our assess stage, working with our clients to just see where are they at today. And that helps us use that system to develop their strategy and plan to create a strong practice. Awesome. And I'm going to ask you this again at the end of our chat, but where is your website? If somebody's listening and they just want to jump in right now and find that content you just talked about. It is brandpoint.com. And if you go to our resource and blog section, you'll find all kinds of content around this subject. Okay. Thank you. We'll, we'll say that again at the end for those who need a repeat. So we're here on the System and Soul podcast, and we've talked about some systems, and we could talk at length, you and I, and nerd out all day on content. Mm -hmm. I love this stuff. But let's talk about something that's just as important, perhaps more important, and that is the soul of a business and how its brand shows its soul through, mm -hmm. and, and there's probably no, other than the people who are the brand, who carry the brand into the market and into the client relationships, probably the next most important piece of how a brand is experienced is through content. So- how does your work have a deeper meaning and impact? How can it be more effective if a company has clarity about the soul of their business? Sure. Um, I, I love what System and Soul is doing around this concept because I think it's been a missing piece. And it really, to me, it really almost relates to like what Simon Sinek talks about with his, you know, starting with why uh, and, you know, and that, is kind of my shorthand for what is the soul of your business? What are you trying to do? And there's a lot of times where we talk to people and, you know, we're mainly focused on outcomes, right? We want more traffic leads and sales. And those are all important, but it's hard to translate that into compelling marketing. So when we understand our clients, why and what makes them tick and, and what gets them excited about what they're doing, it just, it makes everything that we do easier and it makes everything that we do better for them. Um, right now we are working on a brand that is launching a line of tablet-based cleaning products. And their why, which they're super passionate about is, is they really hated seeing the environmental impact of like filling a bottle with liquid and shipping it all over the country. And, and then and it's, it's in a plastic bottle that's going to be used once and thrown away and take 500 years to break down. And they're like, you know, this is bad. There's a, there's a better way. So their why around, hey, we're going to have a really nice system and it's reusable and it's, it's you know, no impact was something that our whole team could just really rally around. And it really drove the entire digital marketing strategy that, that really well articulated and passionate why. And it, it's something that I encourage everybody to really spend some time trying to articulate. I'm surprised how many companies cannot clearly articulate their why beyond I want to make a lot of money. You know, it, I, I think, how do you make your client's life better or your community or the world a little better? That's much more compelling. And if you can do a, a great job of that, the financial rewards are the byproduct. They're That's not the, exactly they're right. Not the goal. 
I love, I don't know that cleaning company, but I, my husband's an environmental consultant. So I'll be watching for that content, but I'll send you a link. Yeah, please do. But I love that because the world doesn't need one more advertisement about a cleaner kitchen sink. The world, we need to capture the hearts. I mean, everybody has cleaning products already. So now you got to get market share from a market that is very saturated and do it in a different way by attaching to the heartstrings. And that's right. important. I call it, you know, I love Simon Sinek and the golden circle, the start yeah. with why was, was really influential for me. And now I talk to our clients about what is your life-changing purpose for existence? Like really, totally. what are you doing that changes the world and changes lives for the better? Because if you don't have an answer to that, I don't know why you're in business mm -hmm. and probably you've forgotten why you're in business, right? So that's exactly. critical. It all starts there. Yeah. All right. So let's say I'm a business owner listening to this conversation and I'm starting to feel a little uncomfortable and awkward realizing I probably have some major gaps in how I'm thinking about content in my business and big opportunities. And gosh, where do I even start? Because like, and maybe I have a website and a couple of dusty blogs, but I don't have any regular kind of cadence. And I haven't thought about how to connect it to a really meaningful value proposition or helping potential buyers. Where do I even begin to think about mm -hmm where to start, how much to invest, who I'd need to hire, all of that. Yeah. Well, uh, first I would say it's 2022 and it's time that your business got serious about digital. Uh, our world is increasingly online and you can't afford to half-ass your digital strategy or execution anymore. The expectations, your customers and prospects expect you to provide amazing digital content. They expect to be able to do business with you online and they expect it to be a great experience. Um, beyond your customers, you know, one of the things that I, I often talk to clients about is what's on fire for you. And the, the thing I'm hearing today is recruiting. I'm having Alan. a hard time finding people to fill positions. So that's my next podcast with my next <laughs> guest. <laughs> It's a big deal. It's coming up constantly. And, you know, I encourage business owners today to even think beyond your marketing, your, your prospective employees, they have their own journey that they go on and they, they need great content to inform that journey. And, and you almost want to think about your prospective employee journey like a marketing strategy and yes. the companies that do amazing at that they do significantly better recruiting and getting the right talent on board that companies than companies that um just post an ad and call That's it a right. day and you get dumped into a career page so i would say first and foremost just make a com i think everything begins with commitment and make a commitment this year to get serious about your digital marketing. Uh, the next thing I would do is hire an expert to help you clarify your value, assess where you are today, and then create a plan for you to move forward. And then the only question really becomes, who is gonna execute that plan? Is it going to be an internal team, uh, outside resources, or, most commonly what we see is a combination of the two. Right. I mean, you could consider perhaps an authentic brand fractional CMO working internally right. with a wonderful agency partner, like a brand point on execution. I think that might work. Might've seen that somewhere. That would be a great place to start. <laughs> Shameless self-promotion for both of us, but thank you for teeing that up. Um, but seriously, this has been a really fun and meaningful conversation because it speaks to the heart of what system and soul is all about, what authentic brand is all about, and how companies like yours are helping businesses live their most meaning, you know, really share their most meaningful value proposition to the world, which will attract the healthiest, happiest growth for them in clients and employees. Um, and who doesn't want to love the work they do and the people they work with? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so, well, Scott, this has been so fun. And I'm going to ask again, because I know a lot of our listeners will want to learn more about BrandPoint and potentially connect with you. What is the best way for them to do that? Sure. So uh, our website is brandpoint.com. And I encourage you to sign up for our newsletter. There's tons of, I mean, we are in the content business. So there's tons of great content on our website. I encourage you to check that out. 
And I would love to connect with you on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm easy to find Scott Severson on LinkedIn and uh, would love to connect. So thank you so much, um, Jen and Authentic Brand and System and Soul. This has been a lot of fun and really appreciate it. Thanks uh, again so much, Scott. Um, listeners, I definitely encourage you to get in touch with Scott. He will increase the value of your network just by connecting with him. So. Uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks.